Good afternoon and welcome back to The Longing. Today we're going to continue reading our book of metamorphoses. <clears throat> I hope you're all doing well and uh, let's crack on, shall we? The Silver Age. But when good Saturn, banished from above, was driven to hell, the world was under Jove. Jove? Succeeding times, a silver age behold, excelling brass, but more excelled by gold. Then summer, autumn, winter did appear, and spring was but a season of the year. The sun his annual course obliquely made, good days con contracted and enlarged the bad. Then air with sultry heat began to glow. The wings of winds were clogged with ice and snow. And shivering mortals into houses driven sought shelter from the inclemency of heaven. Those houses then were caves or homely sheds, with twining osiers fenced and moss their beds. Then ploughs for seed the fruitful furrows broke, and oxen laboured first beneath the yoke. The Brazen Age To this came next in course the Brazen Age, a warlike offspring prompt to bloody rage, not impious yet. <clears throat> the Iron Age Hard steel succeeded then, and stubborn as the metal were the men. Truth, modesty, and shame the world forsook. Fraud, avarice, and force their places took. Then sails were spread to every wind that blew. Raw were the sailors, and the depths were new. Trees rudely hollowed did the waves sustain, ere ships in triumph ploughed the watery plain. Then landmarks limited to each his right, for all before was common as the light. Nor was the ground alone required to bear her annual income to the crooked share, but greedy mortals rummaging her store digged from her entrails first that the precious ore, which next to hell the prudent gods had laid, and that alluring ill to sight displayed. Thus cursed steel and more accursed gold gave mischief birth and made that mischief bold. And double death did wretched man invade, By steel assaulted and by gold betrayed. Now, brandished weapons glittering in their hands, Mankind is broken loose from moral bands. No rites of hospitality remain, The guest, by him who harboured him, is slain. The son-in-law pursues the father's life, The wife her husband murders, he the, the wife. The stepdame poison for the son prepares. The son inquires into his father's years. Faith flies and piety in exile mourns, and justice here oppressed to heaven returns. The Giants' War Nor were the gods themselves more safe above. Against beleaguered heaven the giants move. Hills piled on hills, on mountains mountains lie to make their mad approaches to the sky. Till Jove, no longer patient, took his time to avenge with thunder their audacious crime. Red lightning played along the fir firmament and their demolished works piece to pieces rent. Singed with the flames and with the bolts transfixed, with native earth their blood the monsters mixed. The blood imbued with animating heat did in the impregnant earth new sons beget. They, like the seed from which they sprung, accursed, against the gods, immortal hatred nursed. An impious, arrogant, and cruel brood, expressing their original from blood. Which when the king of gods beheld from high, with all revolving in his memory, what he himself had found on earth of late. Lysaean's guilt and his inhumane treat. I've said that wrong. 
He sighed no longer with his pity strove, but kindled to a wrath becoming Jove. Then called a general council of the gods, who summoned issue from their blessed abodes, and filleth assembly with a shining train. A way there is in heaven's expanded plain, which when the skies are clear is seen below, and mortals by the name of Milky know. The groundwork is of stars through which the road lies, open to the thunderer's abode. The gods of greater nations dwell around, and on the right and left the palace bound. The commons where they can, the nobler sort, with winding doors wide open front the court. This place as far as earth with heaven may vie, I dare to call the Louvre of the sky. When all were placed in seats distinctly known, and he, their father, had assumed the throne, Upon his ivory scepter first he leant, then shook his head that shook the firmament. Air, earth, and seas obeyed the almighty nod, and with a general fear confessed the god. At length with indignation thus he broke, his awful silence and the powers bespoke. I was not more concerned in that debate of empire when our universal state was put to hazard and the giant race, our captive skies were ready to embrace. For though the foe was fierce, the seeds of all rebellion sprung from one original. Now, wheresoever ambient waters glide, all are corrupt and almost must be destroyed. Let me this holy protestation make, by hell and hell's inviolable lake. I tried whatever in the Godhead lay, but gangrened members must be lopped away. Before the nobler parts are tainted to decay, there dwells below a race of demigods, of nymphs in waters and of fauns in woods, who, though not worthy yet, in heaven to live. Let them at least enjoy that earth we give. Can these be thought securely lodged below? When I myself, with no superior, who, no, who no superior know, I who have heaven and earth at my command, have been attempted by Lycaon's hand. At this a murmur through the synod went, and with one voice they vote his punishment. Thus, when conspiring traitors dared to doom the fall of Caesar and in him of Rome, the nations trembled with a pious fear all anxious for their earthly thunderer. Nor was their care, o, o Caesar, less esteemed by thee than that of heaven for Jove was deemed, who with his hand and voice did first restrain their murmurs, then resumed his speech again. The gods to silence were composed and sate with reverence due to his superior state. Cancel your pious cares already, he has paid his debt to justice and to me. Yet what his crimes and what my judgments were remains for me thus briefly to declare. The clamours of this vile degenerate age, the cries of orphans and the oppressor's rage, had reached the stars, I will descend, said I, in hope to prove this loud complaint a lie. Disguised in human shape, I travelled around the world, Travelled round the world, and more than what I heard I found. O oh, Menelaus, Men I took my steepy way by caverns infamous for beasts of prey, then crossed Silene and the piny shade, more infamous by curse like like Lycaon made. Dark night had covered heaven and earth before I entered his unhospitable door. Just at my entrance I displayed the sign that somewhat was approaching of divine. The prostrate people pray, the tyrant grins, and adding profanation to his sins. 
I'll try, said he, and if a god appear, to prove his deity shall cost him dear. T'was late the graceless wretch my death prepares, when I should soundly sleep oppressed with cares. This dire experiment he chose to prove, if I were mortal or undoubted Jove. But first he had resolved to taste my power, not long before, but in a luckless hour. Some legates sent from the Molosian state were on a peaceful errand come to treat. Of these he murmurs one, he boils the flesh and lays the mangled morsels in a dish. Some parts he roasts, then serves it up so dressed, and bids me welcome to this humane feast. Human feast, sorry. Moved with disdain, the table I overturned, and with avenging flames the palace burned. The tyrant in a fright for shelter gains, the neighbouring fields and scows along the plains. Howling he fled, and fain he would have spoke, but human voice his brutal tongue forsook. About his lips the gathered foam he churns, and breathing slaughters still with rage he burns. But on the bleating flock his fury turns, his mantle now is hide with rugged hairs, cleaves to his back a famished face he bears. His arms descend, his shoulders sink away, to multiply his legs for chase of prey. He grows a wolf, his ho hoariness remains, and the same rage in other members reigns. His eyes still sparkle in a narrower space, his jaws retain the grin and violence of his face. I think we'll leave it there for today, that's 10 minutes, 12 minutes done. Uh, we'll continue with this tomorrow, so uh, yeah. I hope everyone has a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon or night, no matter what time of day it is. Have a wonderful one of it. And I will see you in the next one with more of The Longing. Goodbye.